But I really enjoyed the film. I just love anything that's like set across one night. <laughs> you know that's those films? That's one night and one location. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. must be. Well, yeah, I was going to sort of lead into my first question. I was going to ask, as a, a performer, when you go onto like a set and you're wearing the kind of same outfit and you're going to the same place, is that quite an enjoyable experience for you? Do you quite like that? Or, or do you actually prefer the kind of moving around different places across different time frames and stuff like that? <laughs> I love shooting in one location. Just, yes, because we never have to change our clothes, never have to change our hair, never have to change anything. It's amazing. So what was it about this project, this story, this character that sort of really attracted you in and made you think, right, this is one I'm going to I'm going to take on? Um, well, the script was amazing. Um, Makunda and I think I think his wife wrote it with him, but they it was so amazingly written for it's a, it's a huge idea in one little tiny location in one night. So many different, I love when stories overlap like that, where nobody knows each other, and then all of this, it's like Crash, or was it Crash? Um, those kind of films where, you know, there's a million things happening at once, but nobody knows each other. I love that. So this had that element to it. And then Jim Gaffigan playing uh, a role like this, a depressing, sad, um, serious role, and it's all my fault. <laughs> it's all my fault. So... And I just loved all the themes that were going on. And, and I just thought, I, I just thought it was a really interesting script. Mm. Did you know Jim previously before getting involved? No. no. I didn't know anyone. And we'd all been locked down for months in cages, you know, by the world. So it was really nice to get a phone call and say, hey, you want to come out and play? <laughs> well, know? I thought um, like your protege, learning how to do the, uh, learn, learn the piano and play the piano. That was my thing during lockdown. I thought I'm going to learn how to play the piano. And I didn't even buy <laughs> one. I, I didn't do it. I didn't even, I said I was going to learn French and learn the piano and I didn't either. Did you do anything in that period that you said, right, I'm going to learn this Spanish or something? <laughs> well, we did start Duolingo in, in Italian for the kids at that time. And I was teaching, we were homeschooling the kids. So I hands on homeschooling. Um, but she started failing out of school with my daughter. And I didn't, I, she's a straight A student. So I was like, she's fine. She's, she's got this. But she had taught herself how to, she wrote 15 concertos. And I didn't know that's what was going on. I had no idea. And I'm all in the same house together. I didn't realize that she was writing these full songs. So, but we did a lot of interesting things in the, in the pandemic. We did a music video for my boyfriend's band, All Them Witches. Um, so I directed that. Um, we shot a, a part of a mini series in this house that, that a lot of people all over the world were shooting these things that had to be in the home on their iPhones because everybody was locked down. So we all had these scripts that were written and, and we shot them. And I think some of them, I think they went to some festival or something. So we stayed really, really busy. I had a lot of people that stuck in the quarantine with us. So we were lucky. We had a house full of people and we got to have a really, um, my kids learned how to climb trees, like all the way to the top. My boyfriend's an arborist. So he was like, you know, we're doing a lot of, a lot of crazy stuff. Mm. Oh, you're busier than me, I think. <laughs> I didn't learn anything new, though. I mean, you know what I learned? I yeah. learned that the world is a freaking mess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can't argue with that. But I saw you um, I saw you say in another interview that you did with Jim uh, that you were quite envious of his kind of time spent just in a car alone and that you were quite relieved when your character's dance scene was cut out. Is that right? Because you didn't, you didn't want to dance and, and perform in front of a whole crew I just wondered even after kind of all this time doing this do you ever still get like self-conscious on oh set oh god yeah. I'm I, my daughter they accidentally enrolled her in the acting program for high school and she's like I'm sorry I'm sorry I just don't want to do it at all I was like are you kidding me I am the first person to tell you don't do this yeah. <laughs> I'm in fear all day mm. I've been living in fear for I don't know how many since I'm 27 years old I am always afraid I always feel nervous. Um, and thank God, like I would have done whatever Makunda wanted me to do. I would have danced and done that whole thing. Um, it was a time cut. So I was like, thank you, God. And um, yeah, I was really happy about that. 
Yeah, I spoke to my cousins doing acting at the moment and I asked if they like it when we're like the family go to see him in a in a stage production. He was like, he loves it. I was like, when I did drama at school, my mum came, I was so nervous. <laughs> that was like, the, the, I hated it. Um, I hate it. Was, yeah. My son will get up and sing in front of everybody. He's got the gene. I don't have those genes. No. I did it because I think I wasn't good at anything else. No. Well, you're definitely you're definitely good at acting. I was gonna, but I was gonna ask. I mean, one of the things I liked about this this um, film is that I like things like we said set across you know one night, but also set in one location. It was obviously in a nice restaurant. So I was gonna ask, what's your favorite go to restaurant? Have you got one that you you know you're going out for for a special occasion? It's your birthday. Where 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 do you uh, where do you pick? Are you in Los Angeles? Yeah. Um. Oh God. I mean, my old time favorites are like Dantana's um for steak and shrimp scampi or chicken parm and their carbonara but then my son loves to go to koi which is like an old japanese spot that's been around for a while we love koi you know sugar fish is always a good staple um but we cook at home a lot so you know we're, we're also big shake shackers yeah <laughs> we like shake shack mm -hmm. But this, um, but the film, because I mean, even though the restaurant looked nice, is enough to put you off blind dates. I'd say. Have you ever been on a blind date? <laughs> no. Nope. <laughs> um, the boyfriend I have now, I kind of can consider that a somewhat of a. I didn't even know who he was when he started writing me. So, yeah, but I was able to Google him and find what he looked like at least. So, is that a blind date? I don't know. I think that, I don't think blind dates exist anymore. Because no, that's true, actually. Yeah, unless you literally, unless they just say uh, you don't know their name and they just say I'll be there in the red shirt holding a flower or something. Like, you better bring a knife with you or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be collide too. But um, yeah. you're, you're also in one way, which I was reading up about earlier, because I know I, I might be potentially sort of doing interviews. So that coming up soon, I know Kevin Bacon is in that playing a character. Is he called Asshole? Is that Kevin Bacon's character? It was that I'm, that's what it says on IMDb. It anyway. so, was in the script. I remember that now that you said that. Yeah. It wasn't because yeah. that's me. That's me sold. But I was going to ask because it is just firstly how that sort of that shoot and that experience was for you. But also, did you get to do much with um with uh, Machine Gun Kelly? Because I interviewed him earlier this year, and that guy has so much charisma. <laughs> it was like interviewing Kurt Cobain or something. I did. I got to give Megan Fox a huge hug, and that was the highlight of meeting um Machine Gun Kelly. He was in character. I mean, there was no way for him to come out of that. Um, that box he had to stay in while we were shooting that because it was the very end of the script and that's when my character finally sees him. For the most part, I'm on the phone with him, a threatening. Um, and I have relations with both Kevin Bacon and him and their father and son. So I was, you know, I'm not a good person. <laughs> in this. I, am, I am a true gangster in this movie. Um, so... I, when, I did have stuff with him, but when I did, I walked in there in character and I walked off in character. And that was it. I um I did an interview earlier today with two British actors about a show and they referred to the current uh, climate of sort of TV as the golden age of television. I thought, well, I'm interviewing Dre <laughs> later on. So I wanted to ask you if that's something you agree with, because I mean, there's an argument we had that back when the Sopranos and the Wire were doing their thing, that was a pretty monumental time. Do you, do you think this is, as just as an audience member even, do you think this is a golden age we're living through? Or do you think that came back oh. when the Sopranos was at its peak? How old were these kids that, you know, <laughs> that would say such a thing? No, no, that's the thing. They were both, one of them was in a show I watched about 20 years ago. So he's a, they were sort of in their late 40s, maybe early 50s. They kind of, really? they've been doing it a while. But yeah, they referred to it as the golden age. I just wanted to know if you agreed with that. I disagree. <laughs> yeah, I disagree. well, you might. <laughs> I, I disagree because I feel like we are saturated. We're oversaturated right now. So who knows? No one cares what's on TV anymore at the moment. It just got, it's just what it's just like everything else in society. We're becoming desensitized to everything. So even good TV, um, it's it's just there's just too much being thrown at you 24 hours a day. It's hard to stay focused on what's really important and great. Um, that's my personal opinion. Sopranos was not the golden age. It was the beginning. And we paved the way for so many TV shows to emerge. Um, and a lot of great TV shows did emerge. I would say that even like during the Mad Men era and Breaking Bad and 
you know, six feet under, like shows like this were, um, but you know, in, in my, def in, in, in their defense, I fell off in the TV world a lot because I had children and I stopped watching, but I do think we're oversaturated right now for sure. So my, my final question, I was going to ask about um, if you, do you mind talking about The Sopranos? Because I know some actors like to always look ahead and not sort of talk about something necessarily that was in their past. But when something is in, it's that good, like The Sopranos and that special, is it still just a joy to kind of talk about and share with people? Here's the thing about The Sopranos. It never goes away. So it's not in the past. It is forever in the present. I can't walk down the street still. So... You know, my kids still have to deal with it every day. They're like, isn't that a TV show you were on when you were, you know, 80 years ago? <laughs> um, thank God I still look somewhat the same. So I can, I, people still are like, holy shit, it's Adriana. But it's, kids are watching the show now. It's people in their 20s. So the show has a new life. And it has a life of its own that has nothing to do with the times it's timeless it, it has become a timeless piece of television another show i guess that has those vibes because my boyfriend watches it all day is breaking back i would say that was might be the only other show oh my. that's fair enough uh, well, listen, um dre it's been a real pleasure speaking to you it really has i really i really like i said i enjoyed the movie and you know and as you said you know you are one of the great character actors one of the great shows of all time so oh, thank you i appreciate that yeah. mm. all right well thank you so much take care and say goodbye to the dogs for me <laughs> ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey, you guys. is yeah. that from the goonies it is indeed, yeah. nice hey, hey.